You've probably heard the concept that strings are immutable in Java, which means they can't be changed. But you may be thinking, hey, I've changed a string object before. All you have to do is take your variable and set it to something else. Yes, you can do that, but that's not what string immutability means. In this video, we'll talk about what strings being immutable actually does mean, all the reasons why they were made to be immutable, and what it means to your programs. My name's John, I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned in a clear, understandable way. So if you like this video, consider subscribing so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description if you're interested interested, so go check it out. All right, so we know that string objects are immutable and they can't be changed, but you know that you can declare some string and set it to some initial value, and if you want, you know you can set it to some other value, right? So what's the deal there? To answer that question, it's important to know what actually happens when you create a string object. So in our example, we create this name variable and assign it the value John. What Java does is create that string variable called name, but that name variable isn't the string object itself. What it is is a reference to a string object in memory that it creates with the value of John. But when you take this name variable and assign it a new value, Java doesn't actually modify this string object in memory. What it does is create a brand new string object in memory with the value Larry and changes this name variable to point to that string object instead. And it no longer points to that John string. So when we say that string objects are immutable, we're talking about the string object in memory. The string variables themselves can be changed to point to whatever string we want. It's the string objects themselves that are not changeable. They're immutable. So that's cool and all right, but who cares? Why does it matter? Why do we not want to be able to change these string objects? There's actually a few great reasons. The first reason is that it enables Java to save a ton of memory space. So let's say we had this string name equals John, but then we also had string another name, and it also equals John. These are of course the exact same string literals, right? When you create multiple string variables and set them all to the same literal string values, Java does something pretty smart. So of course Java creates another variable, another name, flawless handwriting, and you might think that Java is going to go ahead and create a whole new object with the value of John, and it's just going to point to that, right? Well, it actually doesn't do that. When Java creates a string object from a literal, it actually puts that string object in something called the string pool. And then every time another string literal is created, Java will check that string pool to see if that value is already anywhere in there. So over here, when we say another name equals the literal string value John, Java goes, okay, do I have that John anywhere in the pool already? Ah, yes I do. And it takes that another name string variable and points it to the exact same string object that it already created before. That's pretty cool, right? It's using half the memory that it would if it were to just create a brand new string object each time. But what does that have to do with strings being immutable? Well, if string objects weren't immutable, this wouldn't work at all. If you had both of these string variables pointing to the exact same string object in memory, if this name variable was able to change this string object in memory, like instead of saying John, it said Carl, that would also change the value of the string being referenced by our another name variable. So this whole memory saving scheme using the string pool wouldn't even be possible if strings were changeable. But because strings are immutable, we don't have to worry about any of that. We can have two, three, ten, 10, a thousand, a million different variables all with the exact same string value and pointing to this same string object in memory. And we know that none of them are going to be disrupted because that string object in memory can never be changed. There is something to keep in mind there though. So Java will do that automatically automatically with string literals like this. It'll automatically use that string pool. But if instead you go ahead and create another string variable, a third name, and instead of just assigning it to a string literal, you use the new keyword and say new string John. So Java will go ahead and create that third name variable. But because we use the new keyword, it won't use this shared object in the string pool. Instead, it'll go ahead and create a brand new object outside of the string pool with the value of John. Even though it has the exact same value in it, Java will go and create a whole separate object for it. And there's a way we can prove that too. If we print out uh, the value of name double equals another name, Java's double equals will always return true if both of these variables are referring to the exact same object in memory. And of course we know that our name and another name variables should both be pointing to the exact same John string in the string pool. And if we go ahead and run our program, Yes, indeed, it prints out true. But if instead we compared name with a third name, it prints out false. And that's because the name and third name variables are pointing to separate strings in memory. They're not pointing to the same objects. The second reason that Java has chosen to have immutable strings is for security. So let's say we had uh, some method, public void add money to account. And that takes in a string account holder 
and like an int for money to add. You know, for like a simple banking system, this could be a method that just adds some money to somebody's account. So if you were to write this method, you might have some like validations to make sure this is an okay transaction to make. And then you have a bunch of code to actually add the money to the account. But if string objects could be changed, you have a potential security flaw here. This method will be called from somewhere else in the code, right? So I can call add money to account and pass in the name string, which should be referring to the value John and some amount of money like uh, $5,000. And we do need to go ahead and make this method static so we can call it from here. So we've got a situation like this where this name variable is pointing to the string object in memory with the value John. And when it's passed into that method, there's another variable called account holder. And that's going to be pointing to that exact same string object in memory. But the code here that's calling this method still has access to this name variable that is pointing to the string object in memory, right? So if Java allowed changing that string object in memory, you could write some really mean nefarious code right here that would try to wait until these validations are performed in this method. And then it could go and use this name reference to this object in memory, and it could just change it to something completely different, like Carl. It just did all its validations on the account holder being John. But then when it goes to actually add the money to the account, it adds it to Carl's account instead. But that's not the case in Java. Because strings are immutable, it doesn't matter that this name variable still has a reference to that same shared object in memory. This method knows that the string object that this account holder variable is pointing to is never going to change. With strings being immutable, that security risk just goes away. That leads to the third benefit of immutable strings, which is that strings are completely thread safe. So in your Java program, you could have dozens or hundreds or thousands of threads all pointing to the exact same string object in memory. And all of them can be reading that value from memory whenever they want. Even though all those threads are using it, none of them are able to change it so they can all use it completely safely. If you learned a little something in this video, let me know by hitting the like button. And as always, if you really want to support the channel, you could do the whole YouTube trifecta of leaving a like, a comment, and hitting the subscribe button. And if I got something wrong here, feel free to yell and scream at me in the comments. And be sure to check out all my other Java videos as well. I know you'll find a ton of stuff you'll like. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.